Okay, here's a quick run through of the uh, experimental prototype power system. So on the side we have wind charge controller, which will feed into these terminals, which then go to the positive and negative sides of the device. This is uh, currently configured to be an inverter um, out. Uh, whether we not we'd ever use that in this, it's again, it's mainly experimental. Um, it certainly works. Um, if we go to the isolator switch, we see we're currently switched on to inverter. And if I reach over and flip the switch, we will see that we have 240 volts coming out of this side of the device. Now, because we don't want the inverter and this auto style charger to be running at the same time, we've isolated those through an isolator switch. This is a fairly decent isolator switch, 50 amps or so. Um, so we can, so we switched over to the battery charge side. If I now put the cycle there, so that it's reading 12.8 and the charging is on at two amps, which is the max for this um, for this prototype, nine ampere AGM. So we can charge and consume on this side and also charge from the wind side on this side. I'm, uh, at this point, the charge, the wind controller can charge at any time. Now I have had some issues where, <laughs> where the uh, charging on this uh, at the same time as inverting uh, was a really bad idea. Um, so I'm not sure if I need another isolator switch on this side. That would be very painful and annoying if it was. And if that was the case, we would probably lose the inverter functionality and swap the uh, two charge sources to the isolator switch. Uh, again, the automation is, um, is not, uh, not even started yet, but I've got all the parts. Um, so we should be able to automatically detect um, voltage, low voltage, and use a battery monitor. Now, I do have a battery monitor um, on order, which is taking an awfully long time, um, and its its purpose is to monitor the battery voltage and switch off the booster here um, when, switch off the booster when the battery drips, dips below its uh, low uh, voltage cutoff, and then also it'll have a high voltage um, startup position somewhere close to float uh, for whatever battery chemistry you're running. So um, so uh, what will happen is this will uh, charge charge the battery up to float or, or at least absorption, a high end of absorption. Um, then uh, the battery monitor will detect that it's okay to use the booster. The booster will come on and drain the battery at 90 volts uh, five amps uh, max, which I'm assuming the the, the, the inverter will um, will be configured to consume. So we'll be consuming between 450 watts um, and 500 watts until the battery drips below the low voltage cutoff. Then the booster will switch off, and theoretically the wind um, charger would probably have been charging still the whole time, but then it will start to charge up. Now, if at some point you decide there's no wind and you really, um, you've got excess solar, then there's no reason why you can't flip over to the um, power charger, as long as it's data, um, and, and charge the battery through excess solar. Okay, so just one last thing. So if you want to see what kind of voltage, we will turn off the load of the uh, the battery charger, just to be safe. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's okay to have it on, but I, I don't want to experiment with that just at the moment. And if I can manage to get the voltmeter. Okay, Murphy's all there. Across the, all the cables got tangled up. So we're currently reading zero volts on the PV output. So we've got red on red and black on black. We're reading zero volts. We have the isolator switched to the off position, so we're not uh, feeding, we're not dumping, um, and we have no wind connected. We have just got battery. So if I switch the uh, booster to the on position, you'll see the LED lights up in there, and we are reading 52 volts on here. Now, I just have to find the... So on the uh, booster, we have our uh, power... 
Not our power, if I can just see it. Uh, power regulator's there, so we've got potentiometers there. With that, we can control the constant current and the voltage. So we're saying 52 is obviously too low. There's no, there's no way the inverter's gonna accept 52 volts. So I don't know if you can see, I've got the magnifier in there. Of course, it's, uh, the glare is exactly in the wrong spot. But anyway, I've got, got the controller on the, got the screwdriver in the potentiometer. Two volts now. And if I start switching this up, we're going up and up and up and up. And we'll keep going up. So we actually want to set it to 90 volts. So we'll just keep going up. Now, we're not drawing any load at the moment, so we're not really worries. So we want so 70 volts. Keep it up. So I actually don't have a load that I can put on in here at the moment, but we do want ultimately to be on 90 volts. And we'll be able to change the current constant current setting. Okay, so there's 90.9, let's drop it back. One, one, 90. Okay, so we're, okay, that's our setting. We're gonna have it on 90 volts. Now the constant current settings here, without a load on, of course, there's no point in turning them. Now, um, I haven't actually read <laughs> which one's the constant current, but I imagine we'll, uh, we'll find it when we, we put some load on there. Um, okay, that's pretty much how it's gonna work.